Welcome to DEF CON 3. I'm KT McFarland. President Obama is going to lay out his strategy for dealing with ISIS in the Middle East, and one of the components of that will be to work with coalition partners in the region. Who are those coalition partners? Iran, Syrian rebels, potentially even Al Qaeda. To make some sense out of all of this confusion of America's Middle East strategy is Tom Jocelyn for the Foundation of Defense of Democracies. So, Tom, make some some sense out of this. Have we entered a period of total confusion in American foreign policy? Well, I wish I could make it easy. The problem is it's not easy, and there is a lot of confusion right now. Really what you see is a lot of flailing about trying to figure out what America's strategy should be for Iraq, Syria, and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And there really is no strategy. It's really an ad hoc sort of uh, uh, plan right now that the president is putting together. What I'm most concerned about is that the president doesn't really understand Syria very well. You saw this week, past weekend he talked on Meet the Press about how the Free Syrian Army is sort of right. our hedge against both the Islamic State and the Assad regime. The problem is it's not that simple. Uh, really, the most effective fighting forces today inside Syria that aren't the Islamic State or that aren't Assad are actually closely allied with Al Qaeda. So the idea that you're going to ally with this third group or third party against the other two doesn't really make much sense. So in other words, the people fighting, the groups fighting in Syria right now are the Syrian government, that's Assad, we know he's a bad guy. It's ISIS, we know they're bad because they've just beheaded right. Americans. And the third is the Syrian rebels who are affiliated with Al-Qaeda? Well, you have a, a mix in the Syrian rebels. The third, the third branch of basically the fight is really a mix of parties. What I'm saying is that, that they're deeply compromised by Al-Qaeda. And we just saw this. The LA Times had an interview with one of the commanders for one of the groups that's actually supported by the U.S. It's supposedly been vetted. That's mm -hmm. received tow missiles from the U.S. Like they're anti-tank weapons. Um, that guy said in his interview with the LA Times, you know, we basically love Nusra. We're allied with Nusra. And we're fighting with Nusra in Syria. Nusra, the Al Nusra Front, is Al Qaeda. They answer directly to Ayman al Zawahiri. So the problem here is because America hasn't led in the fight here anywhere across the Middle East, really, basically other actors have. And now we're left with all these options, which are mainly bad options, unless we think them through very carefully. Okay, well, what about the argument that some people have said, well, we're going to become the Air Force, we're going to bomb the bad guys, we're going to bomb ISIS, and then we're going to work in conjunction with Iran? to try to stop ISIS. Well, you know, I think the bombing campaign is necessary and we need to do something like that to sort of stem the tie of the Islamic State's momentum. However, we have to be very careful about how we do it. We've already seen in some areas where Shiite militia groups, extremists, that are sponsored by Iran, that are backed by Iran, have basically been the primary ground forces that have gone in behind our bombing campaign. Um, that makes the situation worse because when you basically allow Iran and the Shiite extremists to go in and increase their footprint, what you're doing is you're further radicalizing the Sunni side. You're driving Sunnis basically into the arms of the extremists in their cause, including the Islamic State and others, to fight back. And so basically you can't side with one extremist against another extremist and think that that's somehow going to solve the problem. It sounds like a snake pit where you know, you've got radical uh, Sunnis, radical Shiites. It's going from tribe to tribe, cross borders. Is there any, I mean, why don't we just pull out if this is a snake pit where there are no good actors to support? Well, the problem is since 2011, basically the U.S. has had played that game, basically said we're not going to have a hands-off approach to both Iraq and Syria. And the problem is the threats to us have multiplied. The threats across the region have multiplied. Um, you know, the, the, the sad fact of the matter is the U.S. is the number one snake tamer. You know, if we don't play that role, nobody will. And so you have to think strategically about how to do that. It doesn't mean we want to go in and occupy countries, you know, left and right. You know, the president is very good at sort of setting up this false choice between occupying all these different countries and, and doing nothing. Uh, you know, basically, my view is we have to have a more calibrated approach, but it has to be much more aggressive than what he's been willing to do so far. So what should we do? Well, I think we, we have to, we're going to have to use boots on the ground. I think we're going to have to do some of that. People are very much opposed to that. I understand it. It's a controversial thing to say. But I think special forces in particular are going to have to come into play. It doesn't mean we want to occupy two nations in the middle of the Middle East. But we're going to need to do more, not just in terms of airstrikes. We're going to need to do more in terms of using special forces raids. You know, one of the interesting things here is we've seen with these hostages who were, you know, tragically beheaded by the Islamic State. There was a fail raid to capture them in July. I think the president deserves credit for trying to move forward with that and authorizing it. That was a risky raid that he, he authorized there. But one of the lessons we learned is we had no human intelligence about where they really were. We only had satellite imagery and sort of electronic surveillance and that sort of thing. And so because we were blind to what was going on, we didn't even know that they had moved these guys out of their, their holding cells. That's a tragic lesson for us because, because we have no footprint here, we can't really see the enemy very clearly at all. And that's really, I think, a, a major problem going forward. Okay, well, thank you very much. Tom Jocelyn, Foundation for the Defense of Democracies and editor of the Long War Journal. And that's it for DEF Country.